Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Regional Director Asia Pacific Airbnb, Kumhang Hong Siu, in discussion with Skift Executive Editor and Founding Editor Dennis Shaw. Thanks. Hey, everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, first, you're, well, you're welcome. Uh, first, a quick announcement. The networking session is, the networking break is right after this, and our friend uh, Fred Sal from uh, Octave will be handing out a small gift to everyone, so you'll find him afterwards uh, right in the area over there. So, um, I'm a terrible person, so I have to ask you this question. You're banned in Singapore. We're here in Singapore. You're banned in Singapore, not you personally, but Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but Airbnb operates in Singapore. So uh, how does that work? And um, are you talking to the government? And where's and where that headed? Well, uh, Dennis, thanks for inviting me. And thanks for uh, <laughs> dealing with the difficult questions. Uh, but no, uh, I'll say we face a uh, uh, you know, challenging environment uh, in Singapore for our hosts. You know, Airbnb as a company uh, you know, complies with all the laws that uh, apply to us in the places that we operate in. We do also ask our hosts to comply with all applicable laws, but obviously the Singapore position is very uh, stringent. Uh, we have been talking to the Singapore government for the last few years, um, and uh, you know, we, are very, we have actually been pretty committed to helping, to partnering with the government to put in place uh, fair rules. So it was quite disappointing, uh, I would say, that uh, the government, uh, when the government announced a few weeks back that they were not looking to update the rules, which frankly are pretty outdated. Having said that, having said that, you know, uh, Airbnb's journey is, uh, you know, really, uh, we've been on the journey to become Airbnb for everyone. And so one of the things about that has been to diversify the accommodation offerings that's uh, available on our platform. Uh, so, for example, we've been onboarding uh, boutique hotels, uh, service apartments, and the same goes for Singapore. So we're doing that. In the longer term, I'm actually uh, reasonably optimistic about the, door, uh, you know, about the rules changing here. I don't think the door is permanently closed. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we continue to speak to the government. You know, I'm a Singaporean, uh, and I, I joined Airbnb partly because the vision for home sharing is so powerful. I believe that it can bring so many benefits to, to society. And one of the things that it can do for Singapore, actually, is to solve a problem around the aging population. Because uh, when you're a retiree, you worry about retirement income, you worry about uh, active, uh, active aging, being, continuing to be active, and you worry about you know, aging in place, right? Being in uh, the environment that's familiar to you in your own home instead of having to move out. I think home sharing actually checks all those boxes, and, uh, which is why I'm optimistic that you know, sometime in the future we'll see that changing. Great. Um, let me just get the IPO question out of the way. Uh, what is the date that Airbnb will be going public? Well, we have said that we will be ready to go public this year, and beyond that, I really have nothing to share today. Okay, that's shocking to me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> let me talk what I, about what I call the, the, three, three, the three C's of hospitality these days, which is convergence, confusion, and the conundrum of hospitality. So, see, see if you can follow this. Um, Airbnb recently invested uh, 150 to 200, to 200 million in Oyo Hotels. Airbnb is opening up a hotel in Manhattan. Oyo just bought a vacation rental company in Europe. Marriott is getting into home sharing. So what is going on here, and, and how are you positioned for all these changes? Well, I'll start by saying that uh, when our founders began uh, Airbnb 11 years ago, you know, uh, they blew up air mattresses in their San Francisco apartment, uh, hosted guests, and then they were told by everyone that this thing would never work. So 11 years later, obviously, home sharing and alternative accommodations has proven uh, you know, its value as a category. And you know, seeing all the, the uh, other companies wanting to come into this space uh, is, is actually a validation of our core business. Um, but you know, we've been ahead of that. As I mentioned, you know, we really, we really want to be Airbnb for everyone. Uh, and so even as uh, other companies have been uh, you know, making these moves, uh, we've also been diversifying the offerings that we have on our platform. And ultimately, we really see this as uh, you know, kind of who provides the best, magic, most magical experience for travelers. Mm -hmm. And we have been building an end-to-end -end travel platform that really wants that really combines where you stay, uh, you know, what you do, how do you get there, all in the same place. 
Uh, and you know, I, I, that's really where our vision has been. It's been uh, behind a lot of the moves that we've been making. And you've also been talking about flights, uh, you know, speaking about an end, end experience. Mm -hmm. uh, will we be seeing flights in, in this region anytime soon on Airbnb? Well, uh, we've hired Fred Reed, uh, who was the right. founding CEO of uh, Virgin America. Mm -hmm. Amazing guy. Uh, and you know, uh, today, you know, obviously, not, no news on that. But we're actually uh, working through all the different ways in which we can reimagine the transportation experience. Right? We're not looking to launch an airline. We're not looking to just uh, offer another place where you can book airline tickets on the internet. Uh, but you know, we really want to uh, kind of reimagine and and transform. Uh, transportation in a way that's not been done before. And so we will be looking to share more news in the months ahead. Right. You talked about uh, diversifying the kind of uh, inventory supply you have on Airbnb. Will we see, um, you know, big name uh, hotel chains on Airbnb anytime soon or in the future, you know, like the Marriott's and the Hilton's, Accor? So what I'll say is that, uh, you know, our guests are actually looking at, looking for unique experiences. That's why they come to Airbnb. Airbnb has this uh, unrivaled brand uh, in the travel industry, and you know consumers come to us looking for a certain type of experience that's unique, that's authentic, that's local, and we you know, we know that there are more traditional players like uh, you know more traditional hospitality providers mm -hmm. like boutique hotels and bed and breakfast that can provide that kind of personal experience, uh, but you know maybe not every uh, traditional hospitality provider will do that, and so for now uh, we are gonna you really only bring on the uh, types of experiences that our guests are looking for. So when you talk about uh, unique experiences, so Airbnb do, did launch an experiences mm -hmm. business, uh, is it a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so far, you, you're, you're avoiding mainstream experiences. Like if, if, I want, you know, if I go to Paris and I want to see the Eiffel Tower, I'm not going to see that on Airbnb. I'm going to see uh, you know, uh, lessons in how to uh, make croissants or something like that. So, do you think you're avoid you're you're losing out on uh, money on the table in terms of not, you know, offering the types of tours that your typical tourists would like to 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 see? Again, it comes back to uh, what our guests and what our community are looking for. We actually have a vision. Uh, you know, our mission is to create a world where anyone can belong anywhere, and we think we're going to achieve that mission by offering magical trips, magical end-to-end -end trips to travelers. And the w one way to get there is, you know, as I've mentioned, what people do when in a destination, uh, when you're in, in a place that they're visiting. And, uh, you know, experiences have been doing incredibly well globally, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it's the, same for, it's the same for APAC. You know, we launched APAC experiences uh, in early 2017 with about 10 markets. We now have more than 300 experiences in more than 350 cities uh, in, in APAC. And we think we're going to end the year with more than 500. And it's done, it's, it's proven to be very popular with our uh, community because we can offer an, an experience that's more authentic and less mass produced. Uh, we allow travelers to see a different side of the destination uh, you know, through the eyes of locals. Let me just tell you about two experiences that I have been on. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, you know, I did a, uh, last year, I did a samurai experience in Tokyo where you know, uh, the host is, a, is, is, a, is this guy who lives like a samurai. So you go to his training camp, which also happens to be where he lives. Uh, you dress up, you learn about the rituals of being a samurai, and you get to do a little bit of training, which is like just amazing. Uh, closer to home, uh, I recently went on an experience where uh, I spent the afternoon hosted by a 123-year-old family business in Singapore who makes handcrafted Taoist, uh, Taoist deities. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a, you know, I'm a local. Um, I got to see this slice of local culture and history that was completely new to me. And these are incredibly rich, powerful, authentic experiences, which is why we are incredibly optimistic about the growth of experiences in APEC. Right. Uh, talk to me about India a little bit and, uh, your, you know, Airbnb's ambitions in India, mm -hmm. and how does the OYO investment fit into your plans? You know, I'll, I'll start with OYO rooms. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, We've been very impressed. We've been very impressed by uh, OYO's ability to uh, grow and scale and offer high-quality accommodations mm -hmm. in some very fast-growing, fast-moving, and very important markets. Uh, and so they're a logical partner uh, for us, and we're very excited to be able to partner with them. Uh, I was in Gurgaon a few weeks back, visited their offices, very impressed by the team, the execution ability, the expertise. 
Um, and so right now, we are working through a range of different ways in which you can uh, collaborate with OYO, and we're very excited to partner with them to uh, you know, make travel more accessible to more people. Uh, that's OYO, is a kind of a global partnership, not just limited to India. For India specifically, uh, you know, we're very excited and we're looking to invest in India for the long term. Mm -hmm. right, we officially launched our business in India in 2016. Since then, uh, you know, the business and the community has gone from strength to strength. Uh, the number of listings has grown by 150%. Uh, a lot of the growth has been driven by domestic. So in the past year, uh, your guest arrivals in India grew by 78%. Uh, but we know we're very early stages. We are very early there. Uh, you know, after all, there are 400 million Indian uh, millennials, uh, more than the population of the US. Wow. So this year, uh, we're doubling our marketing investment in India uh, to reach more consumers, to increase our awareness of Airbnb across the entire country. Uh, and we're also doing all kinds of um, interesting partnerships there to uh, onboard supply, but in a way that really fits the country's goal. Uh, for example, economic empowerment uh, of women in India is actually a really big issue for the country. Uh, and so earlier this year, uh, we uh, entered into a partnership with the Digital Empowerment Foundation, where we will support them in onboarding 15,000 women as hospitality entrepreneurs on Airbnb. So these are some of the different things that we're looking to do in, Air in India. Right. You mentioned uh, marketing investment, which leads to my next uh, question. And um, I'm sure you've noticed that Google has launched uh, alternative accommodations uh, along with hotels. And uh, when I looked at it, like I was looking for, uh, you know, apartment rentals uh, in Singapore or in the region, you know, I see the usual suspects participating in it, Booking.com and TripAdvisor and Expedia. I don't see Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So. Will Airbnb, do you plan on participating in the Google um, meta search or how's that going to go? Well, uh, we're not there today, right. but uh, you know, we think our strength really is our community and our brand. So we have a very powerful brand, uh, which has allowed us to build a, uh, you know, a growing and loyal community. And our community is loyal to us because we treat them as uh, members of the community, not as commodities, mm -hmm. right? And this growing community has allowed us to create a global network with a very strong global uh, network effect, right? Uh, more guests on the platform means more opportunities for hosts, more hosts coming on provide more options for guests of every kind. Uh, and all of that has come together to allow us uh, to uh, offer unique high quality accommodations to our guests. And we think that the totality of that offering is something that is very hard, if not impossible, for other companies to offer. And so we're, we remain uh, committed to that vision. So other companies treat their guests as commodities. I can't speak for other companies. You're going to have to ask them. <laughs> I couldn't resist. OK, so you were um, the number two employee in APAC. Uh, for in Singapore. Right. Oh, in Singapore uh, for Airbnb. Uh, five years ago, um, APAC was probably a fraction of Airbnb's business. Uh, where is it today and where is it going? I was employee number two in Singapore. I right. joined in October 2012, so it's about six and a half years. Uh, you know, APAC, APAC has just grown so much for us. You know, APAC is fueling global travel growth and it's the same for Airbnb. When I joined Airbnb, we had a hundred, less than 100,000 listings uh, across the region. Today, we have more than 1 million listings in Asia Pacific, uh, and we've had 100 million people check in into Airbnb listings in the region. Uh, and through the platform, our hosts in APAC have made $10 billion uh, total in earnings. Right? So that's, uh, the, that, that's, the, that's how far we've come compared to where, 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 you know, to where we were when I joined. But it's still early days. Look, uh, you know, I mentioned India with 400 million millennials. China has 400 million millennials. There are other countries coming up like Indonesia and Vietnam. So we know we're very early days. We know that a uh, APAC will continue to be a key engine for Airbnb's growth. Uh, and so we're looking to make Airbnb the platform of choice for travelers in APAC. Uh, and we're going to be doubling down on Airbnb. Sorry, we're going to double down on the APAC for <laughs> Airbnb's next wave of growth. Uh, what about China? W uh, why will you succeed in China where other Western companies have failed? I think that's a really good question. Uh, Airbnb is a rare example of a uh, US headquartered tech company that is finding success in China. Um, and you know, in the early days, we focused on outbound travelers, really leveraging our global network, uh, which, which gave us a real advantage. But China has also become one of our fastest growing destination markets globally. 
right? Uh, in 2018, uh, our listings in China doubled. Uh, in Q1 this year, uh, Q1 2019, uh, guest arrivals in China grew 200% year on year. And you know, by our uh, own internal estimates, we think that uh, China is going to be uh, Airbnb's number one origin market globally by 2020. And we think we have uh, been successful there because we've localized our operations and we've localized our product offerings. Right? Uh, you know, we've hired a strong team of local talent in China. We are relentlessly focused on quality. And we've rolled out a suite of product features and adaptations uh, that, are, that meet the unique needs of uh, Chinese users. Right? So some examples, we've launched a Chinese brand, uh, Aiping. Uh, you know, China is the only country outside of North America with its dedicated uh, product and engineering team. Uh, and you know, that team has uh, done things like you know, uh, enable WeChat login, uh, you know, cater for Chinese payment uh, methods like WeChat Pay and Alipay, uh, even launch a WeChat mini app, which allows uh, users of the WeChat app, uh, WeChat client, to, use, to book on Airbnb within WeChat. Right. Right. Uh, so all these things uh, really just uh, represent that, that um, you know, are the, the outcome of uh, uh, the understanding that to succeed in China, given its unique environments, you really have to localize how you operate and what you offer the consumers. And I think we, we found traction with that. Your business model in China seems to be a little bit different than other, other uh, countries. Uh, for example, uh, the fees are more, more paid by the hosts than, than guests. Um, there's a, more of an emphasis on professionally managed properties. Um, why is the business model so different, and can you apply that in other com com uh, countries in the region? So I think uh, to the point I made about localizing our offering, right. Right, I think that's uh, one of the outcomes of localizing our offering. And so uh, we think the strategy to win is to look, take the global product, global playbook, and really localize that for the needs of each country. That's what we've done in China. Uh, you know, the fee structure there uh, has been tailored. Uh, to meet the uh, you know, specific dynamics of the Chinese market. And so uh, we will look to do that uh, elsewhere where it makes sense. Okay. Uh, talk about Japan. You had some setbacks in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, How did you go about rebuilding uh, your presence there? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, uh, you know, Japan introduced a new home sharing law last year. Uh, you know, as Dennis mentioned, you know, it's a little bit challenging in the early days. And earlier this year, we announced that we we're going to invest $30 million in Japan across a series of initiatives to grow the com our community of hosts and guests, uh, and also to promote responsible and sustainable tourism. And that plan is really uh, paying dividends, it's working very well. Today, we have uh, 50,000 listings, more than 50,000 listings in Japan, which is almost as many listings as we had before the new law uh, came into force. Uh, we believe that uh, based on current trajectory, by the end of this year, it will be bigger than we were uh, you know, at the start of last year. Um, and, and it's really kind of been, we've, we've been finding success with our strategy there. For example, based on the regulator's own data, two thirds, almost two thirds of all short-term rental properties registered in Japan are available on Airbnb. Wow. Tokyo and Osaka have all along remained uh, in the top 10 most visited destinations for Airbnb globally. Right. right. And part of the strategy there has been, you know, uh, we've localized for Japan. We've also done some interesting things uh, in Japan. For example, we've uh, launched a world-first initiative there called the Airbnb Partners Program, where we've brought together uh, about 70, more than 70 uh, leading Japanese companies, including blue chip companies like ENA, Mizuho Bank, and so on, across a wide variety of industries, um, all to better serve our hosts and guests in Japan. In what way? Uh, so for example, uh, um, one of the companies is a company called Prime Assistance, which is, uh, they call it a dispatch company. Mm -hmm. And so they are able to provide, uh, you know, essentially a human being uh, showing up at a listing within, you know, 20, 25 minutes anywhere across Japan. Uh -huh. And so there are some things uh, about, you know, our model there that actually require that level of, uh, you know, hand-holding, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it very, very powerful. Nice. Let's go to the questions. Why does Airbnb, Airbnb not introduce more brands to cater for different customer segments? For example, Airbnb for business travelers. Well, we do have Airbnb for business. Right. So uh, Airbnb, uh, Airbnb for work, that's what we call it. Uh, so certainly we have that. Uh, and in the past, you know, we've uh, also launched uh, other things for family segment and so on. Uh, so it's less about introducing more brands because as I mentioned, 
we are a global network, uh, we have global community, and so we think uh, all these different segments actually have a place that they belong in our ecosystem, our, the Airbnb ecosystem as a whole. But we are looking to see uh, how else we can better serve the different needs of different customer segments, uh, and Airbnb for Work is a really good example of that. And uh, a related question, uh, you're doing corporate travel and meetings, how does that fit in with your consumer mission and identity? So our mission is not a consumer mission. Our mission is uh, all-encompassing in the sense of, uh, you know, we're really, uh, the mission, as I said, is to create a world where anyone can belong anywhere. And anyone includes leisure travelers, tourists. It also includes business travelers. So some of the things we've done, uh, you know, to ser better serve uh, business travelers are really to introduce kind of uh, specific product features for them, things that travel managers are looking for mm -hmm. to help them manage travel better, to address duty of care, so on and so forth. And we've also been moving, uh, late last year, we acquired a company called Guest, which does, uh, you know, essentially uh, uh, event spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're looking to also uh, incorporate that uh, into our offerings so that business people can also feel a sense of belonging even when they're not traveling, for example, when they do off-sites in their home countries. Right. Um, is the future in professionally managed properties, maybe it depends on the country you're in, uh, has growth in the host-led home sharing market slowed down? I would say that, you know, as the, uh, again, we want to be Airbnb for everyone. So our core segments will always look for certain um, experiences. Uh, you know, for example, you know, uh, uh, our, our, our core segments uh, are looking for unique, authentic local experiences. And very often that means staying uh, in a hosted stay, in a private room in their home. Very often that actually means staying in neighborhoods that are outside of the central business districts and so on, right? The tourist hotspots, you know. Um, so, so that part of the business remains very strong and is very critical uh, to Airbnb and our, and our identity, and we continue to be focused on that. Having said that, you know, different uh, other types of customers, uh, other types of guests are looking for different things. For example, business travelers, uh, uh, you know, coming into a city just for one night, arriving late at night for a morning meeting the next day. You know, uh, hotels actually serve that very, very well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's why we've been making moves into the hotels vertical. Uh, and you know, I'm really, I, I will share with you, nine out of 10 guests who book a hotel on Airbnb for the first time will come back to book a home on the second booking, hmm. right? On the second booking, it's either a private room or an entire home. And that's, uh, that tells us that they've come to Airbnb, they found the experience amazing, and they want to come back and sample the other things that we have to offer. See, there's convergence. <laughs> there you go. And now we can convene for our networking break, I believe. So, cool. Thanks thank very you. much, Dennis. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.